Welcome to today's episode of Class B Confessions, where we answer your frequently asked questions about living in a Class B RV. We've been living in our Airstream Interstate for over two years now, and we can't wait to share what we've learned with you. My name's Aaron, this is my wife Chris, who's Irene, and let's get into it. Today's question is from Kathy Eberly. She commented on our YouTube video and she says she's always wondered how we manage our black tanks. She has a 50 gallon black tank and as a full timer, she has some limitations with that. And she's curious to hear what, what tips and tricks we use to stretch ours out a full week. And we are not boondocking professionals by any means, but we have been boondocking now for the past year, uh, about half the time and we've really developed a good system for us in our little van to be able to boondock for a full seven days. And so our black tank, which is what we're gonna talk about just solely today, is 15 gallons. And we compiled eight of our top tips and actually just what we do on a weekly basis to make that last for a full seven days. Now the black tank, it is the tank that holds your toilet waste. So in this video, we are specifically talking about poop and pee and everything that goes into pooping and peeing. If that grosses you out, you don't wanna hear about it, this video isn't for you. If you are curious how to stretch it out, then keep watching. Okay, for those of you that are not familiar with how an RV toilet works, basically you depress the pedal half and the bowl fills up with water you can do your business and then you push all the way down and it will flush the whole bowl. Now, just like toilets in your household, this can waste a lot of water, up to maybe a half a gallon per flush. And when you only have 15 gallons and you're using the bathroom multiple times a day with multiple people, 15 gallons is not gonna go very far. When we are hooked up to full hookups, we actually fill our tank in about two days. And that's because every flush pedal puts water in the bowl, and it fills that 15 gallons that quickly. So let's get into our number eight tip on how we can serve our black tank. Okay, here's the first tip, and we put these in order from what we feel saves the least amount of water all the way up to our number one tip, which is gonna save the most amount of water and black tank space. So here, we're gonna talk about the right kind of toilet paper, and we have three types of toilet paper we use. One is flushable, and the brand we use is Scott 1000. And I think it was Fit RV that did a giant toilet paper test a long time ago. And I think this was one of the top ones, if not the top one. But basically, it disintegrates if you look at it. So it is definitely something just as good as any type of RV toilet paper. And I don't think you need to use RV toilet paper. Uh, a single ply toilet paper will work just fine. So the right TP for the job. Um, we use this for number two, we flush it. Number one, I use a luxury toilet paper. We did talk about this on our shower wet bath episode. And for this, it's your classic, you know, fluffy toilet paper, quilted Northern, a uh, nice cottonelle, something that's two ply, something that feels good. Um, so you have number one and number two, number one, number two. And then next we do use a body wipe. This is McKesson Stay Dry Disposable Washcloths, and this is intended for your entire body, including your private parts. Yes, we have tried a few different types of these style of wipes, and I think we've settled on this one. We've used Kirkland's brand, we've used Cox, Costco's Cot brand. Cottonelle. Cottonelle, um, flushable, non-flushable. We don't flush them anyways, so this one, um, I think is a good value. We got it off of Amazon. It's 15 to like $20 for a case of 12 and that's packs of 50. So it's 600 wipes. And what's cool about this one is it's long. It's, it's like almost kind of like toilet paper. You know, most of these, most of the wipes are like half the size. So it's, it's kind of cool in that aspect. And we do use these as twofold, you know, for our body in between showers and stuff like that while we're boondocking. Yes, so you will see these again when we do our episode, how to preserve your gray tank, but we do use them for our black tank as well. However, as Aaron mentioned, do not flush these, never flush those. Always make sure that what you're flushing is uh, safe for your tank. All right, let's keep the train rolling and get into number seven. 
Tip number seven is cleaning your bowl itself. For that tip, we keep a bottle of vinegar mixed with water. It's a solution. We keep this nearby for cleaning the bowl. So in the event that you have something messy, rather than sitting and just pumping on your water flush and using the flush to clean your toilet, you use this instead. It's concentrated. You can target it with a direct squirt to clean exactly what you're trying to clean without flooding the entire bowl. Also, you can use wipes. We do keep disinfecting wipes, or you can just use toilet paper to simply wipe out your basin. Um, think of it the same as kind of you're wiping your butt, you're wiping the basin. You don't need to waste a lot of water, just get in. Do what it takes to clean up and get out. For the vinegar solution, I just mix roughly half and half, half white vinegar and half water. Um, when I first started doing this, I did add a little essential oils just to brighten the fragrance. However, since water and vinegar is multifunctional and you can use it for various cleaning around your household, I eventually eliminated the oil so that it was a true cleaning solution that wouldn't leave an oily residue if I wanted to take it out of the bathroom and clean other items with it. So it is multi-purpose, which is oh so important in an RV. Next up, let's talk about your black tank supplements, the chemicals, the things you throw in the tank magically to help you feel better about your black tank. We have been using this Camco TST Max orange scented um, stuff for probably, I don't know, a year or so. We really seem to like it. It's available all over Walmart, Amazon, and basically these help your waste liquefy and they also help break down tissue and so that will um, help compact things in your tank so you can use the full amount of tank space that you have just like how we separate our trash so that it is organized efficiently and like folding dirty laundry so that it compacts nice and tight this is the same concept it really does help prevent getting like the tp mound of stuff when you really just want it all to lay flat as possible now this stuff will last you quite a long time it's very inexpensive i think this uh 32 treatment is about 10 bucks at walmart i can't remember what we paid that's how long these things literally last um so it works really good for us. We really like the smell of this stuff. It smells, I don't even know how to explain it. It's very citrusy. It's pleasant. And it's not like chemically, it smells really good right after you dump it in. And the reason we started using this is because when we first started boondocking, we went so extreme to use as little water as possible in our black tank. We ended up with the dreaded pyramid of doom. The pyramid of poop. <laughs> And so you need to have that happy medium between saving water, conserving water, and also using water so that everything kind of slushes melts, together. Melts together. <laughs> I also want to give a mention to happy campers. That is something that I know a bazillion RVers use. Everybody says it's great. It's the organic biodegradable powdered uh, supplement that seems to work really, really well. I will say it is quite a bit more expensive than this stuff. I don't know if it works better. I think we'll try it sometime eventually. Um, we just always seem to kind of have this stuff around and uh, I would like to give that other stuff a try sometime. Now, both the Camco and the Happy Camper treat about 40 gallons per treatment. So if your black tank is smaller like ours or larger, it's gonna have to vary for use um, with the size of your tank. But the Happy Camper stuff actually says that it works so well that while you're dumping your tank, there are absolutely no smells. And I don't know, yeah, I don't know if this product does that or not, but that's why I'd really like to try it to see, you know, if it magically turns your black tank contents into a delicious peonies smelling. And peonies and roses and exactly. strawberries and oranges. Speaking of dumps and moving on to our number five tip that we have is to dump your tank the very last possible time you can before you head out to go boondocking. I know that sounds like it makes a lot of sense and people would just naturally do that, but you do have to kind of plan that out and make sure there is a dump close to where you're going as opposed to dumping where you're at and then driving all day, shopping, running, doing your airing, errands. And before you know it, you've already used your black tank for a day and you haven't even started boondocking yet. Yeah. 
that's true. On travel day, we do a lot of errands. We do a lot of stopping. And while the person who's going in and shopping and stuff can use public restrooms, whoever's waiting in the van, which is Aaron, he's in here just using the bathroom <laughs> as long as I'm taking to get ready on our, on our travel day. So it really does add up. Set yourself up for success and go in with as empty of, of a tank as possible. I will also note if you have time and you also have a black flush on your tank, go ahead and flush it as much as you can before so that it's a completely empty tank and you're starting fresh from zero. Okay, we are getting into the top of our list where you are really gonna have some great space saving tips here. And this next one, we're gonna have to go back into the bathroom to show you this one because it's that good. Tip number four is a true confession. So believe it or not, when Aaron and I were sitting down to sit down and talk about today's tips, we both do this tip, but we both do it a little bit differently. And even though we live arm to arm, we've never talked about how we each execute this tip. And today we did. So we're calling this tip the TPX. And essentially what you do is when you have to go number two, you line the toilet with your flushable toilet paper like so. And what that does is it creates a barrier between the toilet and your poo so that you don't leave a big giant mudslide on your toilet. I know it's gross, but this is a true confession. This is a reality. And if you take this little simple steps of doing a little liner, then it will be much easier so you don't have to wipe out your mess or squirt down the mess. This is a big preventative action so that it's clean. You might be asking, where is the X in the TPX? Well, I'm gonna show you how I do it. And I did not invent this. I read this on a blog somewhere, but this is what the TPX is. And this is how it saves a ton of water by like what Chris said, lining the bowl. I actually go smaller, so looked like she was wasting a little bit of TP there, but two sheets and two sheets. I don't really care what it looks like, but the X is simple. You just drop it down that way and then that way. And what that does is it gives you a double layer in the bottom where all the weight's going to be. And then it also covers around the bowl a little bit. So as weird as this is to talk about, this is really a great space saving tip and water conserving tip. And uh, if you're out boondocking, it's just one of the things that you should try doing to extend your black tank. Can you believe how much fun we are having talking about this stuff right here? Well, on to tip number three, and this is a really big one. We did not do this right away. This is something that uh, we picked up later down the road, and that is having a second trash can that you specifically use for bathroom toilet paper and bathroom waste. Yes, yeah, so we did it later in our travels because we continued and continued to press our timeline for this, um, I don't know, for this action because our black tank is our limiting factor. It does dictate the entire amount of days that we can stay. So we continued to push our boundaries and this step definitely helps. So we got ourselves a little foot can. It has a lid. Having a lid is really important to keep your smells in. It just helps you feel cleaner. It uses one of the small garbage bags, like a four gallon trash bag. The can itself is five liters, which is like two and a half gallons or something like that. It's small and it's great. So in this garbage, we put anything that we wipe in number one or number two. And this is where you get kind of really detailed on the number two. So when you're going number two and you're using your single ply flushable toilet paper, usually your first wipe is gonna be the messiest. And most often, Aaron and I both flush that straight down the toilet with our mess. Now, consecutive wipes to really get in and get clean. Um, you don't have such a messy wipe, so usually those are what we put in the trash bin. Now, some hardcore boondockers and boaters do not flush any toilet paper at all. All of their toilet paper goes into a trash can. And we've heard all types of methods out there where people use kind of like, um, like little doggy poo bags that, you know, they kind of self-contain... 
<laughs> He's speechless, guys. So another thing, another thing you can use is like a produce bag. If you uh, ever go grocery shopping and you get, you know, those little cheap produce bags. Dog poop bags are a great example. You put your dirty wipe in there, tie a little knot on it, get it nice and tied off so that the smells don't seep through. A lot of people do that like you said, on boats and RVs. And this goes back to the very first tip that we talked about using the three different types of toilet paper, or if you're a demolition man fan, the three seashells, crickets. <laughs> and this is where you would use the number or the single ply, you know, down the toilet bowl, like regular, and then you can graduate onto the two ply if you wanted to, to throw into the garbage, or I, personally just use like a wet wipe at the end and that goes into our trash can and we've never had any issues with smells or problems or anything like that. Right and since we do use a separate liner in our trash room in the restroom since the can is smaller we have designated bags that are strictly bathroom bags and then our kitchen bag which we use for our everyday trash looks different so if we do have full bags of garbage we know exactly if it's kitchen trash or if it's restroom trash, which just, again, helps you feel more organized and more sanitary. Moving on to our number two tip we like to affectionately call the dry flush. This is something we learned early on because we pee so much that if you use water while you go number one or afterwards, that just doubles what you just did and you're going to fill up your black tank extremely quick if you continue to use your RV toilet like a household toilet. A lot of RVers out there use the saying, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. Well, we bypass that altogether uh, because we just don't use water at all. So combining some of these tips together, that's where that uh, spray bottle of vinegar solution can come in to help out. And what we used to do was we would actually turn the toilet valve off on the back of the toilet while we're boondocking so that no water could uh, come out of the toilet while you flush it. Well, we've since replaced our toilet. We now have a Dometic uh, 311, by the way, with the porcelain bowl and the slow close lid, which we absolutely love. It's much easier to clean. It just feels better to use. It's more residential. For sure. But after replacing that toilet and doing plumbing like in houses before, it, there's so many things that can go wrong with valves in the back and they end up leaking after a while. So I didn't want to continue to do that. Um, so obviously you can just shut off your uh, water pump before using your toilet and that way you don't have to worry about it. But there is still water in those water lines and there is a slight amount of pressure. So to even extend it further, we started opening up the valve in the sink and catching it in a cup before we use the toilet. And that's a good like three or four ounces of water every single time. And that can really add up over a week. I know it sounds like we're nitpicking a little bit here, the ounces, but, but we are. <laughs> if you want to stretch it a week in a van, that's just what you got to do. Once you start doing the cup trick to clear out your water lines, it really just acts as a very good insurance to make sure that your pump is off because many times, so so I've created the habit and Aaron probably has too, where when I go in to go pee, I'll just flood the sink right away to get that step out of the way. And if your pump starts cranking and oops, I forgot my pump on, well, at least you put it in your water cup and not flushed down the toilet. So it's a great way to just train yourself to start turning your pump off. Maybe you're the type of person that leaves it on all the time. And um, it's a great it's a great training wheel, really, to get you in the habit of keeping your pump off and just turning on as needed. Chris and I use the bathroom about 20 times a day together for number one. So that might be more than the average person. I'm not sure. We actually did a video on this a long time ago, if you wanna check it out, where we tested like how long our tanks would actually last, theoretically. I think we were hooked up to a campsite then. But this just goes to show how many times number one compared to number two, and that dry flush really does add up after a while. So I think this is a big tip. But moving on to the number one tip, what is it? Don't use your toilet if you don't have to. Just don't even use it. 
It's going to last forever if you don't use it. But seriously, what we came down to doing is peeing outside on a regular basis during daylight hours. So what that means is when we're boondocking and we're really trying to stretch it out, we go number two in our toilet as needed whenever we need to. We go number one in our toilet when it's like lights out, the sun is gone, it's nighttime, we're cozy, it's cold outside. We use our toilet for number one and number two if we need to. And then as soon as we wake up in the morning, about after our first cup of coffee, once the sun starts to rise, that's our cue that party time is over and we gotta start peeing outside. If we don't use the outside to go number one, our tanks will only last us three days. And that is not enough time for us to enjoy the beautiful, wonderful outdoors and the boondocking experience that we're trying to get. So I think this is a really big tip and another one that's kind of obvious, but really it's not. So we actually pick out our boondocking sites sometimes more based on the privacy level if there's a good tree for me if there's no neighbors around uh more so than is there a beautiful mountain in the background is there a lovely lake that we're nearby it's just unfortunately in a small van like this there's no way around it without having a bigger tank for us to stay out longer now, let me sit and talk about this for the ladies. Being a lady, uh, you know, you're, you're not as comfortable peeing outside as a man, and that's just the way it is. I don't pee outside, I don't lift a leg, I don't do anything weird, I don't have a go pee, there's a lot of weird, like, well I shouldn't say weird, there's a lot of tools and devices that ladies can get to pee outside. A go pee? Yeah. Is it called a, a, a pee go? <laughs> I'm not even sure what they're called. I don't use a them. A But here's what she I do. Go, here's go. my here's my confession. So I use a solo cup. I take one red solo cup at 16 ounces and I pee in the cup in the privacy of my own bathroom. And then since I'm in there, I can pee in there. I can wipe in there, pull my pants up, and then I take the cup outside and I have a designated bush or a rock or something that I pee my, pour my pee cup on. Um, so that means I'm not squatting outside. I'm not trying to bring toilet paper outside. It's not weird. It's not awkward. Um, and it's super comfortable for me. So really the only inconvenience is I have to uh, take my cup outside, dump it, bring my cup back in. I do use the same cup for the entire stay. Um, you know, I've thought about switching cups. I've thought about getting a permanent pee cup. But really, I don't want a permanent pee cup. Um, I just like having the disposable one. I'll use it for one week or two weeks at a time, and then I'll throw it away. And the sizing of the cup is important. So the 16 ounce solo cup works really well for me because it needs to be small enough so that you can get it into your like toilet area. If it's too big, it's gonna be awkward to get in between your legs and pee with. So play around. You might find a different size or a different style works for you. But that's what I like for me, and I'm going to stick with it. I don't need anything fancy. I don't need anything with a handle. I don't need, like, anything crazy. Simple. Now, if all of this sounds crazy, and you don't want to put up with any of this type of stuff, I recommend that you get a bigger RV. These are just the things that you have to do uh, with a small black tank. There's mm -hmm. just really no way around it when you're restricted by the size of it. And some people are going to ask about and talk about composting toilets. And that's a very valid option. We honestly thought that was what we were going to get a long, long time ago. And we've just been kind of, I guess, adapted to the black tank. And we don't mind it. I mean, staying out for a week is a good amount of time in a yeah. van. And, you know, because we don't have a tow vehicle or separate vehicle, we need to usually go back into town to get groceries refresh on water and those types of things anyways so on the composting toilet um the biggest thing that we didn't like about those is that they usually have like a gallon container for the urine um and then of course the composting allows you to stay out for a couple weeks but we'd still have this big jug of urine that we'd have to be dumping out every single day um, and then there's also the option to divert that into your black tank, which that would probably be the best case scenario for us. If we had a composting toilet, 
a urine diverting valve that went into the black tank, um, we could definitely stay out for a few weeks and have no issues at all. We have been to some camp spots. Um, for example, there's some boondocking out in Moab where they actually have vault toilets. We've been to a few places on BLM land that have- Those are porta-potties in Moab. Yeah, that have yep. porta-potties or vault toilets. Um, you know, those are there more for more for primitive tent campers, but yeah, a very, lot of RVers can hop in there and alleviate space in their tank. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of the popular boondocking spots may have that type of uh, bathroom accessibility, but the majority do not. You are on your own. And at first, it kind of feels weird peeing outside, uh, especially if you grew up in the city. That's not something you do. If you grow up in the country, that's something that's more... Um, acceptable i guess as a word but you know you do have to make sure you stay away from rivers ponds water sources animal uh water and can in catchments and catchments and catchments <laughs> water watering for wild animals um and honestly you know it's not bad for plants like urine is a type of natural uh fertilizer <laughs> So I've heard. There are some people out there that do all their business outside, like people that go number two outside. We've never done that. If you do, it's important you follow the protocol. There are some strict rules on that. You have to dig a hole. I think it's at least six inches down. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But if I think it's different for different areas too. It could be. Make sure if you are looking to poop outside that you look it up and you follow the proper protocol. Don't yeah. just leave your poop on the ground. That's disgusting. We cannot really comment on that too much. That's not something that we uh, have done or plan to do in the future. So that's it for today's confession. I hope you enjoyed it. The topic is a little off color, but it's what it is. And it's a very, very popular one. And this is now our number one restricting uh, thing on us being able to boondock after taking care of our electrical system and after figuring out how to carry more onboard water, which is pretty simple to do. Um, your black tank is what is going to limit you the most. So I hope these tips were helpful. If you have other topics you'd like us to talk about, please leave them in the comments down below and anything else you want to say? That is all. We will see you next time on our next confession. That is all. <laughs> that is all. That is all. That. I don't have anything else. That will be all. We've been sliding since I don't remember when.